Okay. Hello and welcome everyone to our big MIR call. And I'm gonna explain now some of these abbreviations. <laughs> We're very happy to welcome you to our global innovation gathering community call where we come virtually together to talk about topics of interest to our members and to our community. And we have the pleasure always of getting to know members and non-members more uh, deeply and uh, getting to hear about the great work and just connecting into that virtual space. So thank you for taking the time to come today to attend uh, our call. Today we have uh, with us a very special uh, speaker, Martine from Kigali, who's currently based in Kigali, Rwanda, and who has been one of the residents uh, for our very first residency program between makers and makerspaces in Europe. So um, just to give a very quick introduction, our residency program has been uh, a conversation and, and um, an idea that we've had ever since the initiation of GIG as a network, where we aspire to have more makers visiting each other's and makers specifically visiting makerspaces to work together and learn from the great projects that our members and partners are working on. Uh, this was only possible uh, um, and implementable through the MAKE project, the EU Horizon project that we have been running for the past three years. Um, and today we welcome Martini as one of the makers, uh, as, as said, based in Kigali, Rwanda, and has traveled to the Hackerspace Liège in Belgium. Before I do this, I would give over maybe to one of the people who've worked directly on the residency to give a quick introduction maybe to the residency, maybe Godson or Kristen, whoever um, would like to take uh, a minute or two to introduce themselves and the residency program. From my side, of course, working for Gig as well. I hope you can hear me well enough. Um, but yeah, the Makers in Residence program has been a really interesting project. Um, it actually started a year ago, and uh, we were faced with many, many challenges in terms of getting visas and being able to support people to travel from Africa to Europe, which was something we didn't expect. I mean, I think um, one of our makers actually who travels to Cape Town later in the year, he actually got his visa, I think. A week and a half ago, having applied for it a year ago. So you can imagine there's many challenges um, in terms of setting these types of things up. Um, but yeah, we, we successfully took four of our makers to Berlin and met with them there. And from Berlin, they traveled on to each of their respective um, hosts in different cities. So it's exciting to be able to reflect on those journeys. I know like Susan and Dobby were there. You met some of them in Berlin. And seeing them now and hearing how their journey is being is why we're all here to learn, to understand, to share, and it's uh yeah, hopefully be mostly positive. And I can say for Tina or Martina at least, uh, she can speak a little bit of French. Whereas uh, from our last school, we realized that the French barrier could be quite polarizing. So yeah, that's from our side of gig. And um, Godson, if you maybe just can give us a small introduction on behalf of Fabian to Green Tech and your involvement in the project, that would be great. Uh, before we hand over to uh, Tina. Gotten, yes. Hi. Yes, can you hear me? Great, great introduction. So, I mean, but I'm, I've am i also been mostly supporting um, in the background um, in terms of organizing the applicants, really helping with a lot of the facilitation with an overview. I think one of the things that we have also ha have, have had to do is sharing, you know, learnings from the Makers and Residency program within the community and the larger, you know, um, EMA consortium, just to ensure that there's a, there's proper alignment. Um, for me as well, it was actually a first a, a first encounter for me. Um, interestingly, this has been in terms of sharing experiences across, even on um for the projects that we have in in green tech, we've actually had you know, one of these examples where we on one of our programs. Because of M this residency program, we had a lot more um, awareness of the makerspace ecosystem, and it became one of the you know preferences for us in terms of organizing a pitch event in Ghana recently. 
you know, um, where we had a number of startups actually coming to um, pitch for another program um, that, that, that we're, we're involved in. So, yeah, I mean, it's been my, my it's been a real pleasure to see kind of the growth um, and the journey so far of these makers um, and the Makers in Residency program. Thanks. Thank you very much, Godson. And with this, I'm very happy to give over to our lovely maker, Martina, joining from Kigali, Rwanda today to tell us more about her experience as a resident in the Yege hackerspace in Belgium. Um, thank you, Fadia. I think, um, uh, thank you for introducing me. I'm happy to be here as a, Geek um, community experience sharing. Um, to be easier, I'll be doing some uh, small presentation to show you the the idea I had. Uh, my journey uh, during the uh, maker in residence. Um, let me share my screen then. You now have permission to do that. Like I just enabled you. Okay. Um, sorry. Uh, um, so um, my journey in uh, make a list this. So I've been, um, it's I've been honored to be part of the maker listings. It's so like um, um, for the maker, we don't have much opportunity to even share um, the knowledge we have, the challenge, um, um, also to share the actual hands-on uh, upgraded idea. So it was a pleasure to be part of the maker listings. That was me first. The First day of the refabrica, I was so excited. It was after after the um, welcome uh, notes where the whole, you know, entrepreneurs, creators started to do some workshop. Um, so I think Fadia has explained about the maker in residency. Uh, so I'll be more sharing about what I was doing. And um, um, my idea was to do the recycling um, machine by using the waste of uh, bottle plastic to make the filament. So um, my first challenge, because I'm uh, the makerspace manager here in Kigali, was to also um to do some prototyping uh with the with the machine with the 3d printer so the maker could come in uh, start to do uh stuff but when you tell them the the price of the filament was mostly high and um, that's how I come up with the idea so what what we can do to remove this barrier because the most of the, the creator, the innovator are more startups and uh, um, university students. So when it comes to financial affordability, it wasn't something easy for them. So um, also to create the machine that will be easily to implement at the same time. Um, so uh, the first day, the first week was, I was in Berlin, I got to um, attend the Republica. Also, I had the, some workshop with Geek. Uh, I saw some excited uh, projects, uh, new innovation. I met some people who do some fabric from scratch, um, some wire closes connection VR tools which I want to bring in the makerspace to bring more workshop, um, design thinking kind of that stuff. Also, I saw some uh, uh, PCB maker boards from Ghana, I think. 
was uh, designed as uh, their part of country. I think also the idea triggered me to, you know, implement in here and uh, had some very good session with the Gigi community. So um, for the first week uh, was too much for me. I couldn't keep up with the activity, but it was more uh, at the same time excited. And then for the next week, I moved to um, Liege where I joined the Hackerspace team. Um, sorry, <laughs> where I joined the Hackerspace team. So um, they supported me to also think about how, because the timeline was a little bit, you know, tight, um, how to implement on time, who's gonna support you in this, uh, what do you need, uh, what are you good at? So so it's like we combine the work or we combine our force to make it happen. So um, every Wednesday there is a, like a meet member where they introduce me to the Hackerspace team and uh, they introduced me the nearby um, uh, building um, B3. It's a, like a huge uh, library. So you have a side uh, um, fab lab. And um, I had my card to access if I want to go to learn something, if I want to go to ask some team of the fab lab uh, some ideas. Uh, which machine do I need to use from there? So that was the most of it, and I uh, was excited to kick off uh, with the with the project. So um, in implementation was to look at um, also not to build the machine. I will bring it here, and then. I'm starting to use it, but also share with the community here in Rwanda uh, by um, also train some uh, school to use the, the, the machine. And uh, the, the idea come after it was just to find the material which costly effective. When it comes to implement, I didn't want to uh, make a high um, low cost for the for the raw material so it was understanding the facility we have the machine um also to sit down um uh to share the availability for everyone who's going to be supporting me when uh, because um the hackerspace team they don't attend attend every day it's like uh they have also the online um, space where they share the idea who is coming, what they need, something like that. So that was uh, the first uh, um, implementation. So during the uh, hackerspace hacker in hackerspace, I we had some good achievement, I would say. Um, so. Um, the first thing was to get the bottle cutter. So um, make sure we had the, some 3D printed design to cut the bottle um, to see the how uh, the final result. We had um, design small parts. I think it's there where I was testing. And also we managed to even to do some different sizes when it comes to thickness. So um, I don't know if everyone knows about the, the recycling uh, filament and uh, connecting all the components together, redesign the, the mock-up was too much going on. And, uh, but I was excited to uh, implement on time. And also, um, uh, we had some challenge during the implementation where um didn't want to um include the coding system so that would be easier for everyone also to understand um to make a design the mock-up more 
you know, easier, no complex stuff. So that's me when I was excited on the last week to implement and test the filament. Um, I brought it in here in Rwanda. There are some few broken parts, which I'm, I'm redoing for now, but I want to also to implement it in um, other school. I'm searching for collaboration right now to also to get more force to bring up with, um, you know, more creation uh, when it comes to school, the there is more, you know, young innovator in there, young um, creator, young programming people. So I think it's gonna be more uh, push uh, also, um, I would say, um, success story. I'm gonna put put much energy in that, and I want also to thank everybody who has a, a coordinate to make this happen. I want to thank uh, the Geek Innovation, uh, Green Tech, the maker, also the company I'm working with, who supported me to even have access to this maker space to have uh, everything. And shout out to the uh, Hackerspace team. Uh, so thank you for everyone to be part of this. <laughs> mm, I think that was it. Um, and uh, during the uh, Maker in Residency, I got opportunity to visit some space to learn about um, other makerspace activities, other the where the model of working. Um, so it was a great opportunity for me to even share um, my idea. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, if you have a, like any question or let, let me know. Thank you very much, Martine. That is lovely. Such uh, an exciting journey. Just watching it from your presentation is great. Uh, I have some questions, but before I do this, I would like to also open um, to our members and attendees. Does anyone have comment, question, something they would like to share with Martine? Joseph, welcome. I see you've unmuted. Are you preparing yourself to talk? <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, not now. I would have a question. Uh, yeah, uh, Martin, thanks uh, so much for your presentation. I really like your project. I already told you once. I actually, I'm really curious since I tried out now like a, a 3D printer with like filament we have here, like ordered, like how was like um, doing this time, like how was the outcome? Was it working the filament, the recycled filament by the bot, like by the bottles, like how was the, um, the, the try? I, I would be really curious to know more about it, how, how, happy you are with the result after you tried it and um so for the filament we used in liege it was quite different what we have here in rwanda so um but not different in uh, uh way of um you know making it but in way we're using in a 3D print um, as the same uh, with the filament. Normally, we have uh, the PLA, the ABS. So you have to go with the temperature. So you have to deal with the temperature. You have to test with the temperature, and it's uh, you know after few session testing, it's working well. So for the tools, uh. They're different in uh, um, extruding the temperatures when it using 250 
uh, one we have in Rwanda, the, the one we did for the um, hacker space, it's 220. So it's like more lighter than uh, the one we have here. So it, I think also it depends on the thickness of the bottle. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Like you use, uh, can I, um, you use like this, I don't know how, like the, like, when you were in Berlin, like maybe you saw these normal like plastic bottles we bring out, like like a really skinny plastic. Do you use kind of this kind of like really skinny plastic from the bottles, and you recycle them? Like what? I, unfortunately, I don't have any of this bottle here. But oh yeah, I have one second. <laughs> okay. Can I like kind of this bottle here, and then you recycle? Can you see? Yes. Yes. And. And it's like, then like you use this, you, you like, and then you recycle and then you make the, the try like the trial, the, the production of the filament. And then you, you print that in the 3D printer. Um, is it like correct? Like, or is it different plastic than this one? Um, maybe I'll show you the sample, but that one, because of the curve, you have to remove uh, the upper part. We want a, like a smooth surface when cutting, so that would be easier to even to exclude uh, the filament. Uh, but for that one also would definitely work. Uh, uh, one second, so I can bring the sample we did for both. Yeah, nice. Uh, maybe also, Susan. Interestingly, the a lot of the German bottles are actually already recycled. So I think that's why a lot of the time they're super, super soft. Um, but let's see what uh, Tina shows. Yeah, nice. So I don't think here you can see the difference, but this is one we did from uh, from Liege. Uh, the background. Mm. Nice. Uh, and that one we did here. Oh, cool. Yeah. So. The one we did in Liège is so thin when you look at uh, at this one. Nice. Yeah. Maybe I'll share even the sample we, we printed. I don't see it right now. Uh, yeah. Cool. So, and what, what would you say was the, your biggest challenge like in, in like doing all this? Was it like to find the right temperature in the end? Or what was like what was your biggest challenges in in your process? Uh, the first thing was uh, uh, the language <laughs> to communicate with the team when it comes to the clinical part. French and English was uh, like no, I don't understand what you're saying. But that was uh, I had to use my little French I had it in my back pocket. Um, the second thing was also what you say, the, the temperature setting, because we didn't want to go above or uh, lower. Uh, what happened if you go higher, the, the plastic start to make melting in, in, during the extruder, so you can get the final the filament as you wanted the firm. Um, the third one was, um, I don't remember, uh, to print, we printed the whole mo model of, uh, you know, where we're going to put the electronic component, but we didn't do the exact measurements. So the, the component didn't fit that. That's why we end up doing the wood components, like the model. Yeah. Rather than that, to connect, to test, everything was also easier. Like the component was working. We didn't miss anything. And we uh, included the uh, motor control when it comes to ex exclude the, the, the filament at the end. Uh, so we don't need the programming system to send like we need uh, this microsecond to move in this um, direction. So we control uh, via the, the motor control. It was like a small electronic pieces. Um, yeah, that's it. Cool. 
Okay. Yeah, it's, it's maybe, amazing. Maybe also the traveling. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was just saying, maybe also the traveling. That was a challenge. I, <laughs> I was about to miss one flight when I was in Frankfurt at the last minute. Uh, but rather than that, I uh, that one was a big one. It was on the last minute. I got nervous. I was on the right stand, but they changed the 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 stop by. I'm like, where is the people here? So um, I was about to uh, you, know, and uh, luckily I didn't miss another uh, flight. <laughs> I it was uh, it was good, it was good. I was scared to go from Berlin to Liège because it was like um go to Blasos and then take um take the train to from Blasos to Liège but it was a quite good experience I didn't get lost <laughs> yeah Yeah, I would like to add that I did uh, like this 3D printing like workshop, I have to say, and uh, here in Berlin one and was so complicated, I have to say, and all, we got explained so much about filament and it's it's a science actually, it's a, it's a science. I find it really com complicated and I have so much respect for your work. I, it's it's fantastic, especially also to work with this, re like to recycle and really then to, to create completely like new things it's it's really fantastic your your idea and your project um i made us some documentation maybe i can share with you uh, but if you need a help i can also help you me too it wasn't a real smooth you know um working but i can support you during the testing um I shared the document I made, uh the connection if you need to. Yeah. Oh, that is so nice. That is so nice. Thank you so much. I have one topic on that quite fast. Uh hello Susan. Good to see you here. <laughs> um I know Casa Criatura here in Brazil and also another maker space from, from Salvador, they had quite similar experience to yours, Suzanne. And also I know Saad in Singapore had also bad experience. And I keep seeing online a lot of people trying to do these filaments and it's extremely hard, extremely impossible to reach a nice consistent filament to use later without bubbles, without breaking, all these things that we know. That I keep thinking, how can we avoid this kind of situation of so many makers around the globe trying to do the same thing that doesn't work as well, as a whole, you know? So I like in things verse, in things verse, you have the projects and then you have the level of difficulty of that project, you know? And this would be that kind of project that we would... We need to find a way to explain to all the makers that look, this is the very hard and complicated, almost can't reachable project, and you can start, you know, because I saw the same level of frustration with Casa Criatura here, the same level of frustration with uh, people from the Salvador. Uh, and I, I just don't see the level of frustration sad because sad is never frustrated. So, but I think it's really interesting to understand how we can. Also managed to support makers around the globe can try to spend their times more, you know, at this moment, I'm a maker level one, I will try to do projects level one. At this moment, I'm a maker level three, I'll try to make projects level three, you know, and this kind of thing. So we can, because we know other resources for makers, they are so scarce, you know, just like uh, you also said in the beginning of your call that you were connected to university and, and, and so on, uh, Martin, you know, so all the resources are so scarce that could be an interesting thing to reflect upon how can we suggest different levels of difficulty, you know, and, and this kind of thing. But, uh, and congratulations, Martin, for the adventure, you know, it's always an adventure to take a train in Europe. Uh, my last journey, I took a train, the wrong train, one day wrong train, you know, arriving my destination 24 hours earlier. 
Uh, maybe I could tap in that. So um, I think the first challenge is um, for me also I had an idea to do it on uh, how I wanted. Uh, but when I started sharing with the hackerspace, they throw some ideas how we can do it easier and uh, mm, with uh, the tools that are existing. So the first challenge was uh, to set the temperature. So uh, usually when you go to some programmation coding, that's the first uh, question. So we bought some uh, temperature controller. So you have to set the temperature you can add up or reduce a little bit, but you keep it in the um, same range. Like you see this is coming well, But when it comes to the coding, you think the temperature is okay, and then you start changing the whole uh, coding situation. Um, the second thing was also the, the controller of the motor. You, you set time or microsecond to rotate, but it's more faster or slow uh, when the extruder already melted the, the filament. I think it's the most most issue happen with both. So if we use those two tools, um, also do like kind of um, maybe online workshop or something, will help other people because it doesn't have to go to all uh, difficulties and whatever. So yeah. Yep, thank you for that as well. And I think one of the interesting things we also learned, uh, which we didn't think about before, so I'm sure uh, Godson, Fabian, and myself, and um, everybody were quite surprised. But you know, when we thought about the 3D printer that Martina made in uh, yes, uh, you know, getting towards the end of the, the residency, you know, the question popped up: and how do you transport it? And uh, considering that it's got a blade. And it's going to go on the airplane. You know, these are interesting things as well. So, uh, Keith, maybe you can tell us a bit about what you had to do to modify the actual device to so transport it back after the residency. I, I I think this was a comment or a question, Kristen. Was it, were you inquiring from? Oh yes, yeah. No, I think Tina, if you want to tell us a bit about what what we you know what the discussions and the strange things we have to talk about in terms of um, modifying the actual device to transport it, and you know considering things like border control and removing blades and, and interesting things. Thanks for some insight. Kristin, I can hear you well, but if someone here how well can repeat that for me. Martina, can you go again? Sorry. I don't think I understood this last point. I was I was saying I think... that I didn't hear Kristin well. Um yeah. Kristen is basically asking about the post-residency work that you had to do into transporting uh, uh, the machine back home. And um, and I see here also Kristen writing, having to remove parts and get back to Rwanda. Could you share a little bit about the process? Um, yes, we had to remove some blades. First thing first, you can have that in uh, transportation. Uh, but because I say, The, the material we use is something I wanted to uh, outsource here in Rana. So it wasn't the question for me to remove some parts to bring it here. It was some metal, we removed uh, some screws. Um, but other than that, the material, the electronic component was so inside and uh, some 3D comp uh, parts, we brought it here. Um, 
we remove like two parts, screws, um, cutters. Yeah, that, that was it to transport here. And it wasn't so heavy. Uh, I color it in my luggage. So um, I think the one, uh, the part black was a small part um, to be considered. So um, I'm fixing it. Uh, yeah. Amazing. But it depends it depend on the country rules and regulation, I think, also. Uh, yeah, for it wasn't sure. Deal. It wasn't a big deal for me. <laughs> yeah. Kristen is adding here, don't travel with 3D printing blades to Africa, for sure. And I would add this, if you're coming into Egypt, you wouldn't travel with anything related to 3D printers because they're considered also uh, like uh, dangerous machines to security uh, in Egypt, for example. So they need specific and special uh, licenses and, and, and approvals to get into the country. But I, yeah, I don't think like in the course of the residency, you would need to transport the 3D printer per se, but just wanted to say that it's interesting also how in different countries, 3D printed printers are viewed. Um, I, I'm just so excited to you know, just hear this conversation and get really to the ground and the the, uh, the the things that happened during the residency. But I would love also to maybe just get for the last part of our call today, a little bit more into the, the bigger umbrella of having a maker residency, perhaps even for as far as I know, one of the first, if we'd say in terms of a global residency uh, that is structured uh, uh, in this way. Um, so I just want to ask you, Martina, if you maybe could share with us a sentence or or a little bit on why, what this experience added to you and if you would think uh, that it's important to have uh, a maker residency that is even scaled on a bigger level uh, for other makers to exchange uh, and to visit maker spaces. Yes, I would say this is a big, big opportunity for makers uh, because we had to ex exchange knowledge, uh, learn from each other. It's not something, uh, the opportunity we see every day, like, uh, um, you know, those entrepreneur training or something. Uh, for us, we have to go and more hands-on or understand um, how we can over come uh, share the idea. Like for me, if I would do the, let's say the machine in Rwanda without support with the maker uh, hacker space, uh, I think it would took me longer first thing first. Second, I think I will be having same uh, challenge with, uh, you know, the, the temperature, the extruder, it was amazing also to meet uh, other maker in different departments, let's say from textile, uh, from uh, electronic wearing devices. Um, I think uh, it's a huge opportunity for makers. Um, they gain uh, contacts, people. Now I can ask Susan if I have uh, some question. Uh, we have already connected on LinkedIn. If I know something, um, I mean, this is a huge opportunity for Maker. Um, it's always always uh, uh, um, challenging when it comes to the first cohort, I understand, but I think uh, this was well planned and uh, well coordinated. Yeah, I think I think everybody who participated in this. How does this um how does this affect your makerspace? And maybe if you can tell us a little bit about, uh, I don't know if I'm saying it right, Vestavella or Westerwelle, House Kigali. So would you be promoting the idea of a residency within your makerspace? How does it affect your makerspace? And yeah. Uh, the first challenge on our end, um, we didn't have a much teammate. So I was doing um uh the project at the same time I was working, but you know the maker needs to be in the space where they work. Um 
uh, the challenge was to understand how for me to go in uh, other countries. So while working with the uh, investor valley, um, mostly the maker is more hands on, <laughs> is more hands on. Uh, but the best part of the this uh for the company for me is just if I come back, uh, bring the idea at home. It has to be implemented or edited in one way or another. So let's say if you select or a maker who doesn't have a, maybe access to the facility for the maker space, uh, when you return back home, you don't have access to the tools, first thing first. Uh, you don't know uh, where to, who to talk to, to, you know, exchange what you, what you have gained. Uh, how to start implementing what you have gained. For me, uh, I brought some ideas so far. So um, I think you'll be seeing in upcoming months. Uh, so it's just uh, for them also, for the company, for me to expand uh, the way of thinking in uh, in this room. Uh, because out, of, out here, it's more for working space. Uh, there is a few people who understand the maker space. Uh, there is few people who understand uh, product development best. Um, so for me, it was also to explore the other other facility, uh, or uh, if I want to uh, use other tools, I will call to uh, uh, Loic in Gierge, be like, uh, hey, I, I need this. Uh, could you help me with this? So it was um, it was amazing to be part of uh, this. Yeah, beautiful. It's uh, just so great to hear, um, and just maybe also worth uh, men actually a very quick question to you: Would you think of your makerspace as a hosting makerspace in the future? Would you want to host a maker from some part of the world in your space? It would be an honor to have them here. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Don't want to take over the conversation. I'm, I just really felt like asking these questions. So if anyone got some, I, I think at some point you were un, unmuting yourself. I hope I didn't... Uh, uh, take over and you weren't able to ask your question or comments. You have something to add so far? No, not at all. So it was just really rehashing Kirsten's question so that Martin could answer it. But thanks, thanks. Really, really touched to hear this, <laughs> you know, these uh, uh, accounts from, from Martin. Thanks. And maybe a question here to some of our attendees, because uh, I mean, there are plenty of members here that are engaged on the same level uh, for impact, whether it's makerspace or not. Um, what what are your thoughts on the idea of a residency for exchanges between maybe uh, different continents and countries, but also maybe the idea of South-South collaboration, if it comes up into your mind? Uh, how would that look like? Do you do you see value in in that kind of exchange? Do you think about it? Um, it always a big, big, um, uh, like big added value when it comes to exchange. Uh, about the the knowledge. Yeah. Um, so. We have like few maker space in Kigali. Um, there are some opening in the countryside, but when it comes to exchange in the other country, you could see some advanced uh, knowledge. Uh, also, uh, I think we there is ongoing started collaboration for other makers where we open uh, the platform to exchange uh, what is happening. So there is someone from, uh, I think, Ghana, uh, who reached out last week. I think he got my contact from LinkedIn. Um, uh, so they wanted to create kind of magazine to create awareness for the 
make a Africa make a something. Um, also, uh, they have a, this platform uh, where if you need something to be made uh, like locally, you go on, uh, on your map and then you search the nearest makerspace where you can do your stuff. Yeah. So I think always something new, something on board, something happening. And uh, uh, we didn't have that before. Like I would say on my end, like two years ago, I couldn't, it was in a square room alone. You have to think about yourself only. Now you have to think globally. You have to share your thoughts. If you created something, you have to also post it on on um uh open source online. Like uh we did some uh the cutting photo with Loic, we posted on where we uh, on think givers, so we shared the new version of um the cutting uh cutting bottle so sometimes you feel like you are proud of even if it's something small uh you did share yeah you don't you facilitate other people for their work for what they're doing especially in more hands-on there is a thousand tool there is a thousand skill uh, you have to learn electronic uh, programming it's too much so if we have a, like a kind of a makers community like this one it's helping so much so yeah well this really sounds beautiful because for one uh just seeing yourself and as part of a movement as a part of a bigger uh ecosystem uh a community of other makers that share similar values and actually work on daily basis to to achieve these uh, goals set for the world that we live in is is basically um, what brings us all together here is gig right uh, as a community of members that are dispersed all around the world so it's so nice to just see this also happening in its rawest form you know with how this uh, affected you personally on an individual level, but also how this might have also affected your makerspace and, and the team around you. Uh, it's so inspiring to, to hear you talk about all of this. And I just also want to comment very quickly because we have with us Joseph uh, from AMN, the African Makerspace uh, Network. Uh, and what you have been um, speaking about seems that it might be someone from the team from Joseph that have reached out because it's a, uh, the magazine is basically AMN. Um, and also what you mentioned about the map seems like another work package that we have been working on under make. So it just feels like it's amazing to see this coming all together. Uh, and it's a uh, very, yeah, it's not a coincidence. It, it just gives a completely different um dimension to the project to see it actually helping makers and makerspace view themselves again as part of a bigger ecosystem and be able to share knowledge day after day and connect to other uh makerspaces and makers um to help create impact basically. And Kristen actually is the person responsible for uh, leading the project within GIG, Make Project. So a big thank you goes to you and Joseph and Godson, all of you who've worked uh, for this past three years uh, to make the make a reality. Any last comments before we head off today? Well, in this case, I would like to thank everyone and specific, especially Martina, Tina, as Kristen call you. We really, I'm going to read out what Kristen uh, wrote in the message, in, in the, the chat. Uh, we appreciate you and so glad you had a good experience uh, and we look forward to the next things to come. Please stay in touch and we're so happy also to be welcoming you, welcoming you as a new gig member. So we look forward to connect with you in the next years to come and, and just share uh, uh, your, your journey with your makerspace and everything that you're doing. Um, so thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you, Abinav, uh, Mustafa, Shaukat Ali, Joseph, Godson, Ricardo, Eliza, Kristen, of course, Susan, Nadia, 
everyone. So thank you so much for being here today and see you for the next community call. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. Thank you, Fadia. Thank you, thank you so Bye. much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye.